What do you get if you mix the world's favourite flat earther with an unrelenting thirst for answers? You get CC, of course, Chris from New York, Westchester County. And today on Flat Earth Friday, he is asking all the important questions, like how do we even have water if not for a container? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today though, a massive thank you to the sponsors of this video, Cas P. Cas P is a chocolate brand like nothing I've seen before. The packaging is amazing for one. It's like you're about to unwrap some piece of tech or something, the quality is that good. I mean, it really is a gift for all occasions. And the chocolate? Wow. Now when you order a box, you can select uh, from their 18 flavors to make a unique and personalized box of chocolates. They look so different, like little shiny chocolate thimbles. Selecting your flavors is a really fun experience too. The software allows you to see what the box will look like on the inside before purchasing. And if you're anything like me, then your box will be full of the key lime pie flavor because that is the best chocolate I have ever tasted. I kid you not. My wife and I sat down one evening to sample these chocolates and the whole sitting was an experience. And these new snacks are a lovely touch as well. This is the Tropical Island Pack. Passion fruit and mango in a yogurt casing and I, I know I shouldn't but I'm just going to have one now. Mm, delicious. Click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to get a 20% discount with CASP. Right, on with... Hang on. Right, on with today's video, uh, which as I said at the start, is from CC, Chris from New York, Westchester County. He's talking about that classic flat earth buzzword, water. But before that, he has a pop at Parallax. Weird combo, CC. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's uh, 218, 24. That intro never gets old, does it? Parallax. Oh, flipping hell, something else he's going to misunderstand. What's the meaning of that word? Officially, the effect by which the position of an object seems to change when it is looked at from different positions. <sighs> Those are objects that are moving at different speeds when you observe it. For example, when you're on a highway, you see a house, or actually a building, about a few miles away. And then you see houses right by the highway that are moving quickly past you while you're driving. Yes, this is motion parallax. You see that thing out over there, that building that's a few miles away, isn't moving very much at all very slowly, but the houses are moving. Okay. All right. That's the definition. All right. So now you understand the definition. That's good. I'm proud of you. Thanks CC. But just to clarify the motion parallax you're talking about there is not the same thing as normal parallax. See, now the problem is, um, we don't seem to have that effect when it comes down to stars. I knew he was going to bring that up. This is stellar parallax. This is a method used for calculating the distance to a star by checking its apparent position six months apart when we are opposite sides of our orbit around the sun. And this means that the angle is enough to use trigonometry to work out that distance. And that's not the same as motion parallax, which you mentioned a minute ago. Those would be the amazing light shows in the sky. Uh, yeah. Because some of the lights that are up there are a different distance. And that's what NASA says. <laughs> okay. From each other. NASA? We've been using parallax to work out the distance to stars since 1838, my friend. No NASA required. All right. We don't see any movement up there at all. Our survey said... Take a look at this. This is a trace of stars' movements over a year because of our orbit around the sun. However, the star also has a proper motion, meaning it moves in its own space. That is why there are spirals in this image and not circles. So plenty of movement going on. And this isn't NASA, by the way. This is ESA. None of your tax dollars at work here, CC. Take the moon. 
All right, the moon's a lot closer. It's only 238,000 miles away. Okay, but yet you have a star right across from the moon that doesn't seem to be moving at all. It's set. It's placed. Okay, there, there's, there's nothing there at all. Water. I used to be a, um, I used to watch a survival man, you know, and, and he would create water, of course. Um, and what he would do is he would take a container of plastic or whatever he could find, enclose it, and then eventually he would get the condensation of the sun and the moisture, and he would put some leaves in there, whatever it is, or, or grass, or whatever he could find, and that would create moisture. Okay, that would create drops of water. Very interesting, Chris, but what has that got to do with anything? See, the thing I don't understand is how could have water been created here without a container? What? What? So, because a survival guy used a container to condense water, you are saying that surely that is how water is formed on Earth? With a big Tupperware lid over us or something? Because so water, H2O, created by hydrogen and air, has to be created with a container. <laughs> he said H2O and then said hydrogen and air. He, of course, means oxygen. Air has other things in it as well, a lot of other things. To be contained inside of something. That is the only way you're going to create water. You're not going to create it on a spinning wet ball or a spinning ball up there in space. You can't. It has to be created in a container. Let's bear in mind here, CC, that the water here on Earth isn't created as such, it's recycled. All the water is already here, and has been since the formation of the Earth four and a half billion years ago. Okay, so we're in a container right now, all right? We are in, basically in a container, and that's the only way water can be created. No, having a dome over us is not the only way that water can be created. What, you think that rain is just the water condensing on the dome and then falling off it? Please don't tell me you do. People say that the atmosphere is there and some mysterious... I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, people... You have to understand just basic physics... Okay, you can't create a raindrop, water at all, unless if it's contained. I am memeing the hell out of this. Are we ready? You have to understand just basic physics. Every single time in future, a flat earther says something wrong about physics, guess what clip I'm gonna play? You have to understand just basic physics. Uh, you know, you go on Google now and you can't even find a reference on the Bedford level. You know, eight inches per mile squared, okay? that That's supposedly what we live on. Well, that's a lie. There are books written on the Bedford level. Come on, CC, do better. All right. You can't even find anything if you go into Google right now on the Bedford level at all, whatsoever. What are you searching for, Chris? Because I typed in Bedford level and these were the results. Seems like there's quite a bit there, doesn't it? All right, it says that it's refracting and reflecting off of some nonsense. Okay, Chris, calm down. Chill, my friend. They're trying to steer you in a different direction, okay? That's all they're trying to do. Better. And it really pisses me off that even a simple thing like the Bedford level that we saw six, seven, eight years ago, you know, when they went out there in the 1800, late 1800s and proved over six, seven miles that there is absolutely no curvature at all, that it's completely level because water seeks its level. No, they did not prove it. They proved it was a globe. The flat earther that was there, William Carpenter, looked through the viewing apparatus and realized it was a globe. 
and then did the flat earth thing made up a load of nonsense to try and claim that it was flat. I've studied the Bedford Level experiment and its ramifications in great depth. Trust me, Chris, flat earth lost that day. That formula, eight inches per mile squared, um, when you get to about 90 miles, you're talking about over five and a half miles of curvature. Well, we have videos of mountains that we can see for 700 miles. You have to understand just basic physics. Mount Everest. I, I believe Mount Everest is only, I, my, my guess is about two and a half miles high. Okay. Try five and a half miles, Chris. All right. I didn't even know why I brought that up. I know why. You have to understand just basic physics. Look, I think we can see here that Chris is leading himself down the dark alley of confusion. So I'll say that we're all done and debunked for another Flat Earth Friday. What do you all think of CC's effort today there? Everyone, please let me know in the comments and remember to understand basic physics. Thanks so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you did enjoy this video today in particular, please do consider subscribing to the channel. There'll be loads more in future coming. Uh, similar to this and of course if you enjoyed it very much hit that thumbs up button too just enough time to once again thank Cas P for sponsoring today's video remember click that link in the description use my code SIMANDAN and you can get that 20% discount with Cas P and trust me it's worth it oh mm. I've been Simon Dan have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Saturday session and the third installment of the Kerbal Space Program videos see you then